Uh, I think we can start now. Um, just because uh, I would like to, to start on time and, and to finish also on time for the sake of uh, all the participants here. Um, so uh, good morning to everyone uh, and thank you on behalf of the Digit Brain Consortium uh, for joining us today. Um, uh, uh, my name is Giacomo Benedetti. Uh, I'm project manager at the Competence Center Start 4.0 that um, uh, in the Digit Brain projects, let's say, coordinates the DIHs, so the Digital Innovation Hubs uh, um, uh, network. Um, I will be the moderator of this webinar. Uh, I'm now uh, switching off my camera because of the poor connection here at home, unfortunately. Um, but um, I, um, I will open, uh, let's say, uh, the works uh, of the second open call uh, um, webinar uh, of the Digital Brain Project, which targets uh, both uh, the latecomers, uh, because we have only one month left, uh, and those who are already running uh, towards the uh, the application and that may have some question marks to be addressed anyway. Um, so no, no matter which category uh, you, you belong to, um, uh, this hour and a half, uh, let's say together, uh, will help you to better hit the narrow target uh, of the of the open call. Uh, so I will open the works by providing you with a, an overview of cascade funding mechanism uh, and of our open call process. Uh, then uh, Antonio Ortiz, uh, Digit Brain Project Coordinator at PNO Consultant, uh, will give you an overview uh, of the project as a whole. Um, we will uh, deeply dive, uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, the, the, the wrong name, uh, with, uh, um, uh, with Professor uh, Thomas Kish at the University of Westminster uh, in order to highlight uh, which experiments and use cases uh, we seek to finance with this open call and fix some key concepts in your mind. Uh, then we uh, will give you a taste of what you can achieve with the digital brain, uh, thanks to the witness of two manufacturing SMEs that are sit right uh, at your place. Um, one one manufacturing, one end user, and one um, technical partner uh, that now are leading uh, two experiments uh, that have been se selected for funding um, under the first on call of the Digit Brain project. Um, I'm talking um, about uh, this data solutions uh, representing the driven experiment and uh, Prodesa Medio Ambiente um, representing uh, the um, DT for dryer experiment. And finally, we'll have plenty of room uh, for discussion uh, in a Q&A session to solve all the best remarks you may have. Um, this is just a recap uh, of the, um, uh, of the um, of the rules uh, for this kind of online event. Uh, I think you are probably uh, already used to it. Uh, so I will skip it. Probably the most important thing is just um, that to mention that recording and the presentation will be published, download uh, via the, the funding box and the digital training website. Um, so now for those that are new to the cascade funding mechanism, uh, this is a mechanism that brings you basically one step closer uh, to the European Commission funding opportunities uh, because basically money allocated uh, to large uh, projects such as Digit Brain are then literally cascaded uh, to third parties uh, to financial support, financially support the implementation of small uh, experiment pilots. Uh, it is officially called uh, financial support to third parties because third party is the legal definition of uh, any potential applicants, uh, meaning all uh, basically those who are uh, connected. Um, so uh, here you find several benefits uh, for SMEs coming from Cascade funding. Um, we'll go better in details into each green point here regarding the, uh, the, 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 the advantages coming from the digit brain cascading. Um, uh, so uh, now I'm just skipping to the next slide, but let me underline that the application process of any uh, cascade funding application, any open call application is much uh, simplified, shortened, and with less requirements compared to a highly competitive uh, Horizon Europe call for proposal. Um, so uh, this is important if you're struggling uh, finding uh, call opportunities um, uh, because uh, uh, if you are in this situation I would suggest to start the search from our website 
uh, which will be constantly updated. Um, I suggest to visit the IFRMS portal, portal uh, and the funding box portal that aggregates all the project opportunities falling under the IFRMS, so the Innovation for Manufacturing SMEs initiative of the European Commission, um, or taking a ride um, on the European Commission, Commission website on competitive calls. So these are some links uh, that could be, could be useful uh, for you. Um, so in order to dive into the opportunities uh, DigitBrain offers, I think that uh, last year uh, experience uh, speaks for us. Um, because the first Digit Brain Open Call uh, launched in 2021 uh, was definitely a, a glaring success. Uh, basically, I must say uh, thanks to the willing and capacity to innovate of over 50 SMEs from all over Europe and beyond uh, that submitted um, something like 27 proposals. Um, and uh, after uh, the independent evaluations uh, the, uh, and the finalization of, uh, of contract, uh, we triggered seven new digital twin experiments, making the digital brain family, let's say, uh, growing with new assets, uh, innovators, and use cases uh, in, uh, in a variety of segments of the manufacturing sector at large. Um, I will not go into details uh, of any one of the seven experiments selected under the, second, the first open call, but uh, you can have a clue of this variety just looking uh, at the um, piloting experiments titles. Uh, so spanning from 3D printing of medical devices up to uh, yeah, the, the optimized production of automotive components, for instance. Uh, with two experiments, as you see, uh, unite uh, 19 new partners from Italy, Spain, Hungary and Turkey, um, most of which are uh, SMEs uh, which have been allocated um, to uh, a DIH uh, of uh, the Digital Brain Consortium to ensure technical and, and commercial support. Um, these seven, um, sorry, these seven um, new experiments are what we call wave two experiments. Uh, therefore, those that have been onboarded via the last year's open call uh, are called with two experiments. Uh, those of you that may apply and be selected under this open call will make up wave three. Uh, so if you aspire uh, to become a uh, wave three protagonist, uh, let's see now together uh, what you need to know about this open call. So first of all and foremost, uh, the, the overall budget that can be cascaded within digital brain at this round is likely less than 700,000 euros. And since we expect um, to onboard and co-finance uh, seven new experiments for week three, uh, that means that each proposing consortium uh, shall have a contribution of up to 97,800 euros each. But uh, whom this open call is dedicated to? Uh, Let's say that the bare minimum for proposing consortia is an aggregation of two SMEs or mid-cups. Um, uh, so one manufacturing company um, acting uh, uh, as an uh, end user who has a problem statement and, and pose the use case uh, to be executed in the, in the experiment. Uh, then at least uh, one other organization acting uh, as a technical partner uh, that basically provides and adapts uh, the software for solving the challenge uh, of the end user and um, integrates it uh, in the, within uh, digital brain, um, digital agora and architecture. Uh, then other entities are entitled uh, to, um, to join the consortium if justified to support the above uh, mentioned categories. So this is important to focus on uh, the, the, the core uh, of the consortium and then of uh, uh, anyone else uh, who is needed. Um, however, um, it is important that we are uh, funding, uh, we are providing support only to SMEs and mid-cups. So um, we can have, of course, high performance computing uh, providers, uh, adding uh, computing resources to the experiments and also other DIHs external to the um, network, the current network of DIHs in the digital brain project, but only if constituted as registered companies. So uh, at this round, um, we, uh, 
we cannot uh, vice versa, uh, 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 for instance, to research organization. Uh, and uh, another another important point is that, of course, all uh, the potential applicants shall be established in European Union member states in the associated country to to the program or uh, in uh, in the UK. Um, so, uh, of course, uh, uh, we uh, very much welcome a proposal driven um, by consortia also having um, rewarding features like this. Uh, so, um, uh, we will be, uh, they will be given rewarding points uh, in case of ties during the evaluation process uh, um, according to uh, the number of, uh, of SMEs uh, in the uh, involved in the consortium, um, uh, the um, the presence and the measures to encourage uh, women uh, participation, women participation um, in the innovation of the manufacturing sector, uh, and of course those experiments which will have a cross border uh, impact. So uh, um, a consortium uh, made of um, uh, of actors coming from different member states. So. Uh, here you find uh, some some main points um, uh, as far as the open call funding structure is concerned uh, and the ceilings that are going to be applied. Okay, uh, this is important. Uh, have a look at it. Uh, but since I would like to stay on time and uh, um, since the presentation is available with, with a lot of uh, supporting documents, um, uh, I would save your time. Uh, to uh, of course, it's important to to understand that uh, for private uh, SMEs, uh, uh, the DigiBring projects will uh, provide a co-finance uh, of up to seven percent of funding of the eligible cost. Um, uh, but I will skip it uh, to show you basically um, the uh, the timeline of the second open call that has been launched last week and that will stay open until the thirty first. Of May. Uh, so after this deadline, after the 31st of May, uh, meaning basically one month uh, from now, uh, the evaluation and selection process, uh, uh, together with the, the, the contracting phase, will will take place uh, for uh, four months. Uh, and uh, signatures with the selected beneficiaries are planned for September uh, 2022. Uh, um, the experiments will be then uh, triggered in October uh, 2022, and, and from there on, they will run uh, like every other uh, experiment previously selected for 12 months. Um, so let's see what you have to do uh, in this window here to apply. Um, as you can see, the process is very simple. If you have questions regarding administrative aspects or uh, general information on the open call, you can use this email address here, uh, which is a kind of centralized one. Uh, but you also have to contact one of the uh, digital innovation hubs of the Digital Brain Network to start your journey. Uh, you, you see a picture here uh, representing the regional coverage of the DIHs. Uh, which is uh, better detailed in the guide for applicants, so uh, please read it. Uh, but uh, let me stress to those that have uh, not done it yet, uh, that since we have only one month left, the sooner you will come to us with a concept of your proposal, the more support we will be able uh, to give you, also involving uh, the technical partners of the Digital Brain Consortium to, to be sure that your scope and technical solutions uh, fit with the requirements of the digital brain architecture. Okay, but before any of these steps, uh, you must become confident with a series of uh, information, uh, which are very well explained uh, in a document toolkit um, with these main elements. Okay, so um, the guide for applicants, of course, is your main friend here, definitely. Um, uh, and, and covers from the requirements to be met by the, the, uh, the proposed um, uh, con consortia and experiments uh, up to the funding and budgeting rules. Uh, so um, this is, since we also give you uh, a, an overview of the proposal evaluation and the selection process and criteria, um, uh, it, it is very important. And of course, you will find there, as anticipated, all the DIH's contact um, in order to start 
uh, your application on the right uh, with the right foot. Um, uh, the technical document provides uh, more uh, details, uh, more details on, uh, uh, on the um, on the projects. Uh, this targets basically the technical stuff uh, of the uh, of the experiment proposing experiment uh, applicants in order to ensure the compliance uh, with the implementation stages of the digital brain solution themselves. Uh, and finally, uh, the uh, proposal. Th this is just a zip folder with uh, dealing with the um, uh, requirements and compliance uh, with the uh, European Commission rules uh, regarding the financial support to third parties scheme. Uh, and and this is uh, nothing to be worried about. Uh, so I can anticipate. As you can see, it's only a ten-pager document, which consists of seven main sections. Uh, uh, to support a well-structured and uh, concise experiment proposal. So, um, uh, pretty, please uh, take uh, confidence with uh, all these uh, document toolkits. Okay. Um, of course, you also you have the link here, and you can find every information on the Digit Brain uh, website. Um, so, of course, uh, you have to uh, join um, uh, to the dedicated portal uh, to the Open Core. Uh, so to, you have to, to register. Um, I can assure you, yeah, it has a very intuitive interface. Um, uh, you can, uh, of course, uh, uh, make dummies, upload the, the, the proposal several times. Uh, you can even, I think, overwrite previous version, but um, whatever it happens, uh, uh, don't miss the deadline because the submission must be completed by um, 5 p.m. Russell time of the 31st of May. So if you don't miss uh, this deadline, you will receive uh, an electronic receipt uh, of a successfully submitted application, uh, meaning that your proposal has been accepted for evaluation, so not necessarily uh, for funding. Um, now, just to conclude, um, here is uh, an important point because we want to stress and to underline that uh, money, uh, of course, is important, but it's not the only type of support uh, we provide to third parties uh, because uh, six DIHs, as you said uh, before, are involved in the project with the precise uh, mission of uh, providing help to proposal before the submission uh, and then uh, technical to provide technical and business support along with this uh, successful experiment execution. So uh, now I uh, thank you uh, all for your attention uh, and I will leave the floor uh, to uh, Antonio Ortiz for uh, an overview of the Digit Brain project so that you can un better understand, start to understand uh, what the project is about uh, as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Akumo. Let me share my screen. Now oh, can you see it? <clears throat> yes. yes okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so well, I'm uh, Antonio Ortiz, um, the, the the project coordinator of uh, of the DigiBrain. We have seen how the, the with uh, Giacomo how the the, the open calls uh, work, but uh, what is about the the DigiBrain project? So let's uh, let's go to, to 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 let's go deeper a little bit in, on on it. In very high, very very high level, it's uh, digital twins for uh, for manufacturing. But <clears throat> Let's uh, see a bit more uh, more detail. So this is the the consortium of uh, of the project. It's uh, composed of uh, several uh, types of, uh, of partners: the core technical and administrative partners developing the digital solution uh, during the during the project and uh, performing dissemination, communication, exploitation activities, etc. 
uh, the project. Then we have the the, the first wave experiment partners that uh, as um, they made the, the first validation of the, uh, of the project development uh, in the first year of, our, of the project. And we have the, the network of the IHS at Giacomo, as has just mentioned, covering the whole uh, European uh, territory. The main uh, challenge that uh, Digit Brain is uh, aiming to is facing is to, to enable the customized industrial products and to facilitate uh, the cost effective dist uh, distributed and localized production for manufacturing SMEs. What does, it, does this mean? It's uh, to make uh, production more, uh, uh, more flexible, more um, efficient, more. Um, uh, closer to where it's uh, it's needed. So, and uh, how the digit brain do that? Well, we we use different different tools, uh, different digital tools, such as modeling, simulation, optimization, analytics, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. So, the we in, increase or uh, extend the concept of uh, digital twin with a, a memorizing capacity in order to cover the whole lifetime of uh, of the product. So. This uh, memorizing uh, capacity enables then uh, to accelerate the adaptation of the manufacturer and, and, the, and the products to changing conditions. If there's uh, new uh, requirements from uh, from the clients, or uh, it's necessary to use uh, different raw materials, so it's uh, the the, the, the brain solution allow, enables. Or facilitates this uh, this adaptation. It facilitates the flexible manufacturing, uh, contributing to, to strengthen the, the competitiveness of the European SMEs, and uh, enables also personalized manufacturing in an affordable way, so reducing uh, or trying to reduce extra costs from these uh, activities. But in general, <clears throat> what uh, you, uh, what the brain aims at is to democratize uh, the technology access for the manufacturing SMEs, which are sometimes overlooked and due to um, different difficulties on uh, how to adopt the the different the, the technologies. So the, we have uh, five main objectives uh, in in the project. The first one is to, of course, implement the digital brain concept, which is in uh, in charge of uh, configuring orchestration both data models, algorithms, and, and resources. We have the we are also developing the manufacturing as a service business model, which is being implemented by the digital innovation hubs in order to try to cover as much of the European territory as, uh, as possible. Uh, to uh, extend the capabilities of the cloud factory in a market based uh, market marketplace. So integrating the digital brain and the manufacturing as a service business model into the uh, well known cloud factory and marketplace. We, uh, we, we are uh, going to conduct to conduct three webs of, of experiments. Uh, we are currently in the middle of the of the second one. And uh, the third wave of experiment will be uh, carried out by the second open call uh, participants. And finally, we aim at evangelizing the manufacturing community and the benefits and, and the impact of the manufacturing as a services with the close uh, collaboration of the, the, the innovation hubs and environments. I'm not going to be much in, in detail uh, in here at the te technical level because uh, Thomas Kish from the uh, University of Westminster will go a bit more in, in detail in, in the technical aspects. So this is the timeline of, uh, of the project. We started in uh, back in July 2020 uh, in the, the hardest part of the, of the pandemics, and uh, uh, we are uh, we are now in one month uh, 23. So uh, the, the the second open call is uh, also in the middle, one month uh, and a couple of days for the for the deadline. And um, the idea is that the experiments start in uh, in September October this year. So we have um, on a, and it will last for a, for a, another year in order to have a, also at the end of the project uh, uh, some time to analyze the, the result and make a, a, any modifications which are necessary. So this is uh, all from my side. Thank you for uh, for your attention and, and I give the flow to Thomas.
is from the University of Westminster. Okay, thank you very much, Antonio. I'm sharing my screen and then I will start talking about the technical aspects of the project. So, Could you please confirm that you see my screen in presentation? Yes, you can see it. Thank you, Thank you very much. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, kind of technical background uh, of the project. And, and very specifically, I will concentrate on that, uh, what kind of experiments or use cases we are looking for and what do we expect from an experiment from the technical point of view, very specifically. Uh, this presentation was prepared together with uh, Professor André Stork, who okay. is technical coordinator uh, of the project and uh, I'm leading a technical work package and also uh, part of the kind of strategic design team of the architecture and the technical concepts. So uh, let's see that what, 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 what are those very specific characteristics which uh, DigitBrain expects from an experiment. I assume that uh, because you are in this webinar you already started to read some documents which we published and you are familiar with, with, with some of the requirements uh, of the project. Now, if you started to read these documents, uh, then you saw that two words which are kind of highlighted in this slide are coming up very prominently. And these are things which we would like to very specifically emphasize that these are very, very important when you are designing an experiment. This is a must to conform with. And these two words are industrial product and digital twin. And why is it important? So in industrial products, we mean practically manufacturing machines or manufacturing lines. Uh, machines which are producing other products. This could be robots, this could be a manufacturing line, a highly automated manufacturing line. Uh, this could be more specific in case of very specific uh, manufacturing processes. But on industrial products, very specifically, we mean uh, machine which is actually creating or, 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 or concentrating on the production of another product which product which is which is manufactured and in digitbrain the focus is on these industrial products and these industrial products we would like to model uh, with the help of digital twins so a digital twin is model modeling or analyzing the behavior of an industrial product and I think this is very, very important that we talk about digital twin. It is related to the manufacturing machine, to the manufacturing process, to the manufacturing line. And that is what we would like you to concentrate on when you are developing the digital twin and not the final product which the actual uh, company manufactures. This is very, very important that when you design your experiment, you very clearly identify what is your industrial product, what is your manufacturing line, and what the digital twin related to that industrial product is actually going to model. So these are Now, if we go into a little bit more detail, I would like to ask my colleagues to please mute your microphone. I, I hear some feedback coming back from one of you. If you, if you are, uh, could you please mute your microphone? Uh, so, uh, if we go into a little bit more details regarding what digital twin, how digital twins are created and how digital twins are constructed, then we can see that digital twins, and this is the uh, kind of digit brain definition of digital twin, which I uh, uh, copied here. So in digit brain, digital twins are conceived being formal digital representations of some asset process or system that captures attributes, uh, captures attributes and behaviors of that entity and suitable for communication, storage, interpretation or processing within certain contexts. So these are relatively complex applications, digital twins, which I'm pretty sure that most of you are, are aware of. And digital twins in many cases traditionally were created as a kind of monolithic application or monolithic structure. However, if you dig inside the digital twin, 
then you can find those things uh, which are uh, in this bulleted list. So, for example, digital twins are based on some kind of physics-based model and data. They can be based on analytical, for example, uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning models and data. They can represent time series data. Uh, they can represent transaction data. And all of these uh, can be uh, executed uh, uh, using various algorithms to evaluate these models on the data which were created. But as I said, most of the time, uh, these digital twins were constructed monolithically. What we would like to achieve in DigitBrain is to decompose these digital twins into these three key assets, as we call it, which I highlighted in red, model, data, and algorithm. So when you create your digital twin in DigitBrain, you will be asked to very clearly separate what is your model, what is the data that is fed into that model, and what is the algorithm which is executed and which is evaluating your model with the input data which was specified. And I'm going to explain in the next slides why we want this separation. So why we would like to ask you to separate these very clearly when you are doing the implementation. So what is the uh, 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 motivation behind behind our thinking and why do we want digit brain experiments to separate between algorithm model and data well it has double motivations the first one is that we would make assets model data and algorithm reusable so what we experienced in previous i4ms projects which we were running is that all the applications were monolithic, which meant that when a new uh, use case came up on when in commercial setting, we needed to develop a new application. We needed to start from scratch because nothing could be reused from the previous experiments. In DigitBrain, with the separation of data model and algorithm, we believe that this reusability becomes much more emphasized. So that means that an algorithm, for example, can be used to evaluate various models. Or a model can be used, uh, can be evaluated by, by multiple algorithms. Or data, the same data, can be fed into different models and can come to various other conclusions. So because of that reason, we would like you to separate these assets, publish them separately, and then make them reusable when you, are, when you or other people are developing the next digital twin, then these assets are becoming reusable. And then the second reason is that we would like to make the providers of these assets. I believe these will be primarily the technical partners in your, uh, in your experiment consortium uh, to monetize these assets. So that means that if somebody develops an algorithm, which analyzes, for example, a particular in the, uh, uh, industrial product and would like to sell that algorithm as a building block of uh, uh, a digital twin, then the monetization of the individual asset becomes a possibility. So algorithms can be sold on the platform and can be monetized on the platform individually and can be used by other people to build digital twins Obviously, if they reuse your algorithm or they reuse your model, then they are paying for the utilization of these models and algorithms in the platform. And that's quite important. Now, uh, uh, Anthony already mentioned that uh, uh, in DigitBrain, we are reusing the results of previous I4MS projects. So from every experiment, we are expecting that the outcomes of your experiment will be uh, commercialized on our digital Agora platform or digital marketplace, which was started to be developed or was developed in the cloud manufacturing project and which we are carrying forward in the DigitBrain project and providing this commercialization opportunity for the experiments after the end of the experiment. So we are expecting that the results, you consider the commercialization of the results on the digital Agora, uh, which is provided uh, by the project. Now, this figure you have already seen in Antonio's presentation, uh, and this is showing that when we uh, consider uh, uh, digital twins in DigitBrain, 
then we are considering the entire life cycle of an industrial product from the design of that industrial product to the production of the industrial product. So this means production of the manufacturing machine itself <laughs> to the distribution of that to various factories where that manufacturing machine will be used to the operation of the industrial product, maintenance, and finally the recycling of the industrial product. So we are considering the entire life cycle of these industrial products in DigitBrain. And in the digital product brain, which is the kind of central component of our platform, <coughs> we are memorizing uh, various events which are happening during the lifetime of this industrial product. And based on these memorized events, we can have the better management, the better operation, the better maintenance or the better recycling of these industrial products. So this means that application experiments can cover any of the phases of this life cycle. We are not necessarily expecting a single experiment to cover every single phase, but you can do various things in various phases. For example, in the design phase, you can concentrate on the design of a new industrial product or adopting an industrial product for specific requirements or redesigning or evolving an industrial product and simulating, testing virtually or physically the design process of this industrial product. In the production phase of the industrial product, you can concentrate on production engineering, production planning, uh, producing, monitoring, quality assurance, and so on. In distribution, you can concentrate on the production, uh, distribution of the production capacity. During the operation of the manufacturing line or industrial product, uh, you can uh, gain faster adaptation uh, of the operation to changing requirements. So for example, if you would like to repurpose the manufacturing process, you can create digital twins which are supporting that particular part. In the uh, maintenance part, uh, you can support, for example, predictive maintenance, for example, with AI-based prediction models and so on. And finally, in the recycling phase, uh, the project provides life cycle assessment or LCA activities and models which can help you to better plan the green aspects and the recycling aspects of your industrial product. So as I said, any of these uh, or, or any combination of these phases you can select during your experiment and you can model or you can build digital twin or digital twins in order to model the behavior. But you not necessarily have to cover the entire life cycle, that may be overwhelming for a 12 months. Now, who can benefit uh, from experiments in DigitBrain? Uh, I think this is quite straightforward. So uh, we are expecting manufacturers of industrial products. So we are expecting uh, uh, applicants who are actually creating manufacturing machinery, cyber physical systems, what we call industrial products, and they can benefit by creating better industrial products. But we can also imagine that the maker of the industrial product is not actually part of the consortium, but a manufacturing company that is actually using an industrial product comes on board and creates a digital twin for that uh, industrial product or manufacturing machine. And we also imagine that the consortium will be accompanied with uh, technical partners algorithm providers, model providers, and so on, who are creating various assets in DigitBrain and providing these assets for reuse and utilization. Now, what do uh, DigitBrain offer? And this is the kind of last very, very important message from my point of view, is that what is that thing which we are offering for you or what you need to conform to uh, in your experiment? So in, in, in DigitBrain, we offer what we call the DigitBrain solution. And this is this relatively complex architecture here, which is under evolution. By the time you join as an experiment partner, it will be in a relatively mature phase because we are reaching the kind of last phase uh, of the project. And the complexity of this one will be more or less hidden from you. So this complexity is actually to make your life easier. But what this uh, digital brain solution offers you is that you will be able to publish your assets in DigitBrain. So if you create data model algorithm assets, you will be able to publish that in a repository 
in digit brain, and then you will be able to construct your digital twin by combining your data model and algorithm assets with each other. We call them that you are going to create what we call DMA tuples or digital twins. And once your digital twins are created, then on the platform, you will be able to execute these digital twins on various computing resources, for example, cloud, high performance computing, edge computing resources, and so on. And during execution, you will also be able to collect various events from these assets, and you are going to be able to store and analyze these in the digital product. So this is what, from a technical point of view, DigitBrain provides you. We also provide you expertise and consultancy, so we help you conforming your solution to the DigitBrain platform. We expect, we expect that you will have your own expertise to develop your digital twin, but we will have expertise in order to conform that development into the DigitBrain platform and execute that in the DigitBrain platform. And we also provide you with some additional tools, so for example, uh, modeling environments, uh, AI solutions, uh, visualization solutions, and so on. But we also expect that you bring your own. So we cannot uh, uh, cater for every type of experiment. Uh, we expect that you are going to develop most of the time your own AI, ML, uh, simulation solution, and so on. But for some certain cases, we also do have solutions in the project. But primarily, we are expecting this from you. Now, uh, what technical uh, 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 partners have to do? So what, what, what do you need to do uh, inside the project? So first of all, you will have to do technical development. So you will need to develop your own digital twin uh, and develop the building blocks, the assets of this digital twin, your model, data, and algorithm. We cannot have that much in this. So this means that in this development will be yours. And, and you will be responsible for the development of this. And once your application is developed, we will also ask you to containerize your development, to put it inside the Docker container in order to be deployable in the platform. You also need to showcase the benefits uh, of, of what you gain uh, by using these uh, uh, digital twins. So you will have to uh, showcase how you uh, customize your industrial product and what kind of benefits uh, you gained by applying the digital twin. And, and practically that is from a technical point of view what we expect from you. Now, then we talk about integration and, and what, you, what you are expected to do in order to integrate your solution with the DigitBrain platform or with the DigitBrain solution. I think this is very, very important to understand that we do not have any kind of API so uh, integration would actually not mean you doing significant development work or using any kind of API provided by the platform. What we mean on integration is that you will need to publish your solution in the platform. So this is what we call a publishing process where you will need to provide some sort of metadata through a web interface. This will be relatively complex, but it will not mean any kind of programming it will not mean any kind of API development. It will just mean publishing your solution on the DigitBrain solution. Now, in order to do that, you need to modularize your software. You need to put your software into microservices. You can still keep as much monolithic architecture as it is convenient for you, but we still uh, kind of support the kind of more modularized and more reusable thinking on your side. So we would like to encourage you to modularize your software and put it into Docker containers. And this, in this sense, we are preferring applications which are Linux-based applications because they are typically easier to be containerized. Windows support is also provided, but that may be a little bit more tricky to containerize a Windows uh, application. And you also need to develop, if it is necessary, data connectors uh, on your site in order to feed the data into the application which is running on the DigitBrain platform. After that, you are going to publish your application. So you are publish your data model and algorithm, and you are going to compose the digital twin out of these individually published components or assets. And finally, uh, you are going to uh, define conditions 
uh, which you would like to monitor during the execution of this digital twin, which you want the digital product brain to remember. So these will be extraordinary events. For example, a temperature value raises above a threshold and you would like to remember it and you would like to understand what were the conditions which triggered this extraordinary behavior. And these you can specify and then the digital product brain can analyze these and can provide insights or suggestions how to tackle uh, uh, similar situations. So this is more or less what is expected from you. What Once uh, the application is ready, then you can publish it in the Digital Agora, and then you can execute this application through the Digital Agora and, 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 and run the actual digital twin, analyzing the processes of your physical manufacturing processes. On beyond these technical activities, we will also ask you to contribute or think about the future sustainability and commercialization of the solution. We are not expecting any of these solutions to end after the end of the experiment, but we would like to offer this solution on a commercial basis for you for the long term. So you will be very strongly involved into this commercialization. Now to wrap it up, if you need further information, then you can find it on the DigitBrain Open Course website. Uh, and there you can find a technical document. So this number three here is the technical document which describes the technical details of the DigitBrain solution. And if you click on that, then you will see that we provided not a very long, but a, a very concise and, and, and still relatively detailed explanation how the technical, from a technical point of view, the DigitBrain solution works. So thank you very much. Uh, I, I believe that question. So thank you very much, Thank you very much, Tamas, uh, for your presentation. I think you made um, uh, simple uh, what is uh, can be tricky sometimes, uh, and so everything was crystal clear. Uh, of course, if the people connected have questions, uh, uh, they can use the question box here on the webinar platform, and we uh, promise we, we will address them at the end uh, of the of the webinar um, but in the meantime uh, it's uh, uh, it's now the turn of the witnesses of uh, uh, some SMEs that successfully applied uh, to the last open call of digit brain um, and uh, I hope you can hear me well uh, as you said yep yeah. sorry we have a question written in the chat from Nikos Stasinopoulos, is, you can read it, please. It's for Tamas, I think. Or, or may I read? Uh, may yeah, I read if you can screen? read it, I'm just struggling at the okay. moment to, to see the entire okay. question. I found the question, but I, I cannot read it in, in full. So. Okay, Nikos was wondering are e learning courses or e learning plugins or educational platforms or e learning gamification techniques eligible experiments and case studies for this call? Okay, so. It, it very much depends what that what, what, what do you exactly mean on that. If you just mean on on on, on courses or e-learning plugins, I don't believe that they are that they are eligible unless somehow they are directly connected to a manufacturing process uh, or for a manufacturing machine. So what we would really like to concentrate on are digital twins which are related to the manufacturing machines and the manufacturing processes. If I understand correctly, if it is uh, uh, just an e-learning course uh, uh, and, 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 and you are gamifying the actual e-learning experiment, I don't believe that that is, that is, that is eligible as part, of the, as part of the call. So this somehow needs to be very, very strongly related to some manufacturing process and needs to be related to some manufacturing machine. In extreme cases, I can imagine if it is really uh, somehow the, 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 the learning process is mimicking the, the manufacturing process itself, then maybe there is a kind of remote chance, but you have to be very, very, very specific to show that this is actually something which is modeling the manufacturing process itself. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, I, I think uh, that they can leave, if you all agree, uh, the, the questions for, for the, the, the end of, of the webinar, uh, so uh, to be able to address 
uh, all all at once. Um, uh, now, uh, I really would like uh, to 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 go to the witnesses of uh, SMEs that uh, had applied uh, to the last year open call of Digital Brain. Uh, as we said, the experiments uh, were uh, very are uh, very and very different from from each other. Uh, we will start by giving you a, an overview uh, of a pilot focusing on uh, the digital twin to support several of the phases. Uh, Thomas uh, uh, highlighted earlier, meaning the design, the production, and the operation phases of rotary dryers. Uh, so it is my pleasure uh, to uh, introduce Ana González Sencerado uh, from Prolesa Medio Ambiente, uh, representing the DG, uh, DT for Dryer experiment, uh, and uh, she will show you um, how the experiment will contribute uh, to achieve a faster and uh, more reliable design, uh, a better integration of the equipment in the customer's general process, <clears throat> and uh, to provide uh, an optimal configuration of the of the whole process, if, if I'm not mistaken, Anna. So the floor is yours, and thank you very much. Thank you, <clears throat> Giacomo. Uh, if you can't tell me if you can see the screen, I can can see you it. see? Thank you. Okay. So thank you very much uh, for for the opportunity to be here today and uh, to give a give you a, an overview of our experiment DT for dryer. Uh, to start, I would like to to present uh, our company Prodesa. Uh, Prodesa, we are an engineering company focused on the bioenergy field and uh, the design of pellet plants worldwide. Uh, we provide turnkey solutions for the design, uh, manufacturing and maintenance of complete wood pellet plants, and also for uh, the pr uh, processing lines, such as um, thermal uh, uh, drying, milling and pelletizing. And also from the last year, we are also manufacturing company uh, of capital equipment, uh, specifically hammer mills and pellet mills machines for biomass. Okay, we, uh, we, are, uh, we have our main headquarters in Spain, in Zaragoza, but we, we have also presence in USA, and France, Asia, and Baltics. Uh, we are a company of uh, more than 100 employees, and uh, we take part in the main associations of the pellet sector worldwide. Uh, before to explain the, the experiment, uh, I would like you to understand uh, which is our industrial product, uh, the rotary dryer, and why it is so interesting for us to have a digital twin like uh, the one we are developing in the DT for dryer experiment. Uh, okay, the key process in the biomass pellet manufacturing industry is the, the drying line. Okay, so it is the equipment uh, with the highest energy consumption in the plant. So for economic, um, economic reasons, the efficiency of the process is extremely important. And um, in order to make this uh, process more efficient, uh, the, correct the correct design and operation of the dryer line is essential. A, a rotary dryer reduces the humidity of a solid, usually wood chips, uh, through direct contact with uh, combustion gases from a furnace. The flu gases enter to the dryer at a temperature of 400 degrees approximately and degrees uh, to 100 at the outlet. The design and operation of a rotary dryer presents significant challenges, mainly because, because it must be flexible enough to adapt a, to a multitude of operating modes. As a result, there are multiple variables of operation. For example, the particle matter distribution size, the speed of rotation of the rotary dryer, the target uh, reduction in the moisture content at the uh, outlet, the temperature and composition of the fluid gases, or the environment conditions. So all these uh, parameters 
has uh, present significant uh, range of variation depending on the facility where the, the equipments operate. So the digital twin will improve, improve sorry, the development of this complicated uh, industrial product. Now uh, I'm going to focus on the experiment. Um, this is the one of the seven experiments that were selected on the second wave of the DigiBrain uh, project. And before to explain the technical part, I would like to present the rest of, of partners of this experiment. Our digital innovation hub is CITA Innova, the Aragon Institute of Technology, that give us the support and guidance uh, during the whole project. Electro Ingenium is the independent software vendor. Uh, they are an, an automation engineering company. And they are focused on the, the uh, technical development of the system simulation models of, for the process operation. Then the University of Zaragoza, through its numerical fluid dynamics group, uh, is in charge of the virtual model uh, uh, development of the rotary dryer that will, will be integrated into the algorithm for the optimization and control of the general process. And finally, uh, Memorandum Multimedia, which is a consultant software company that will develop the front end and the final integration into the digit brain platform. Uh, the main objective of the experiment uh, is to, to develop a digital twin of a rotary dryer system. And the digital twin uh, will support the design, production, and operation phases of the industrial product. Uh, it will consist of three main components. Uh, first, a virtual model of the rotary dryer, which corresponds to the engineering phase of the industrial product. Uh, then, algorithms for optimization and control of the operation, which means the production and operation phases. And finally, the, the data analysis, which also corresponds to the production and operation phases. The main challenges uh, that we set in, at the beginning uh, are the elaboration of the real-time model of the time dryer, the simulation of the control based on process models, and the collection and, and analysis of the data plant, the plant data, sorry. The expected results uh, also the, are this, a reduction of time to market of, for rotary dryer, reduction of time to market for digital twins, uh, the energy saving in the process, and the reduction of time in the adaptation to a new operation conditions. Now, after the um, six months of execution of the project, uh, we can show you uh, the how is finally uh, our tool. Uh, here you can see the, the dryer algorithm. Uh, which is based uh, uh, on two microservices in blue. And the first one corresponds to the simulation GUI, the graf graphical user interface and the parameterization, which is the, uh, both the, the first microservice. The second one is the co-simulator uh, that runs uh, the simulation using the data from the first microservices. Uh, another part of the model is the general uh, model that integrates uh, the control and process simulation developed uh, for the rotary dryer process, and that is represented in yellow color. And in next steps of the project, we, uh, we place this uh, entire system into the digit brain platform, the digital Agora. Uh, well, the, this is the general scheme of the models, which uh, were represented before in a yellow color, and that contains the different FMUs uh, for the data transfer and the general drying model. This general model contains a, a 1D model of the physical behavior of the dryer, of the rotary dryer, which has been obtained from a much complex 3D model based on computational fluid dynamics analysis uh, that has been carried out by the University of Zaragoza. And here, finally, the, the slide, this slide represents the front end of, uh, of the system, 
which uh, as you can see is uh, has a very friendly design in order to facilitate the introduction of the data by the end user. Also, I think it's interesting to show you another part of the experiment, which is the communication and dissemination part uh, activities. And this has been performed during these months. Uh, for example, uh, some news in press, uh, the visit of the plant where the rotary dryer is actually installed and uh, the participation next week in the European Congress uh, and exhibition. Uh, well, finally, I, I, I would like to add some comments about the benefits uh, that this experiment has for PRODESA, uh, such as end user. First, regarding the, the usability of the DT4 dryer solution, I, I will point out uh, that, as I have already mentioned, the digital twin will support for us the design, production and operation phases of the rotary dryer. Uh, it will help us to reduce the time needed to design the equipment, to reach a better integration in the general process, uh, and to improve the configuration of the whole line. Uh, additionally, we can have insights through the results of simulations and data analysis, which can facilitate the development of new designs. And uh, furthermore, the digital twin will allow early detection, detection of failures in operation, uh, real operation, thanks to the possibility to train the technical staff that will operate the plant in the future. And also with regard to the benefits of participating in the Digital Brain project, I should also mention that it is a great opportunity for us to become part of such a innovative ecosystem, to know how this technology can help uh, to improve different industrial products and to meet also new partners into the industrial sector. And additionally, the marketing and dissemination uh, activities provide us a great opportunity to publish and, and promote our pro products and reach new customers in the European area. And that's all from my part. Thanks for your attention. And if you have any question, I'm available. Thank you very much, Ana Gonzalez, for, for your um, very uh, clear presentation. Uh, and uh, after, so the, the perspective of an end user uh, like Prodesa, uh, it's now the turn of a technical partner uh, that will talk about the experiment driven, meaning a digital brain for predictive maintenance in the automotive sector, um, an experiment that uh, will analyze, is analyzing, simulating, and optimizing the entire um, operation in uh, an automotive um, component factory. And if I'm not mistaken, is, is also making use of digital brain assets from uh, the edge layer uh, to the user interface uh, uh, in a web-based environment uh, to enhance uh, the, the overall equipment effectiveness, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, um, to, to make it clearer, uh, I'm leaving the floor uh, to Alberto Iera Arenas, uh, Technical Project Manager at uh, Least Data Solutions. So, please, uh, the floor is yours, Alberto. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. And uh, can you see yes, the presentation screen? Okay, yes. very good. So, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Alberto Gerarenas and uh, uh, I am uh, Director of the Machine Learning Section at Least Data Solution, which is uh, a data analysis company in, uh, based in North Spain that uh, we, we basically uh, improve industrial processes uh, in a data-driven way. Uh, and I am here to introduce you a little bit on what we've done uh, uh, in the project name uh, Driven, which is uh, a digital brain for uh, predictive man maintenance in the automotive sector. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oops, well, it's not complete this. Let me see. OK, 
can you see all, all the slide? Oh, it's uh, broken here. Okay, fine. Okay, sorry about that. I was not aware that the animations were on. So, so basically, um, uh, as, as you've heard uh, during the presentation, the previous presentations, especially from Thomas, so the, the experiments are um, a collaboration between uh, different partners. Yeah? So our our partner and the partner of this data solution uh, for these experiments is uh, Sains Autofren, which is a company based uh, originally in uh, North Spain, Navarra, but the, that they have uh, factories also, for example, in India, and it's internationally expanded. And what the Sainsa does is uh, rubber parts and thermoplastics for replacement in, in, in cars and trucks, etc. Yeah? And uh, the main thing they do is, uh, is parts for the, the brakes of the cars. Yeah? Um, the, an issue that they, they have, or well, that is common to all industry, is uh, the machism efficiency. Yeah? So basically, uh, they would like, like most companies, would like to to don't lose time and be as most efficient as possible in their processes. And that is where we're coming. So, so I said, okay, uh, we have a, a lots ex, ex, of experience in uh, predictive maintenance in in different fields, like uh, automotive sectors, but like. Uh, robot arms and all this type of uh, of machinery. We thought, okay, so let's try to work with your uh, PLC data and see if we can improve your efficiency of, of, of your processes. This is a, it's a very challenging uh, problem given the, the type of data that, uh, from the PLCs, but that's what this type of project is interesting for because uh, it allows us to to play without a high risk. Yeah. So we basically in driven analyze, simulate, and optimize the production of the packaging processes that Sainsa uh, performs. So the the factory is is just based um, is just built out of different parts that they interact one goes one after each other in the production line and they have they have like some silos where where different parts come in like a rubber ring and a screw of this size and all these type of of things and they get sorted and, and pack it uh, uh, along the line in different for different vehicles for example vehicle number one for the brakes needs this type of pieces so this gets in the program and then these boxes get made and then comes next product they need to build they have different combination of parts and, and that's how does how this does work yeah so all these PLCs they, they provide us uh, 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 with data from some sensors and uh, most of it most of the sensors are just binary so basically it says box yes box no uh, <laughs> Screw number five, fall in, uh, uh, yeah, this type, this type of thing. So basically, it's not ones and zeros. We just get a ones in some variables when something happens. So we get action or no action in a given variable. Yeah, that's the most of the data that is available. So that from that point of view, is is very uh, it's very hard to model this this problem because it's obviously from a data point of view, it's, it's very ugly data. Yeah? Okay, let me pass all this down because I had not prepared this for the... So the idea of the solution, as I told you, is to just do some predictive maintenance. That's what they would like to have, yeah? So they would like to monitor the risk of, of a PLC is going to fail, to, 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 to have some failure. And if, if we detect that that's going to happen in the future, yeah, then uh, some alarm should be raised and that the alarm would require that an action needs to be taken in at the plant. So some somebody need, needs to intervene in the PLC manually, most probably, maybe in the future automatically. Yeah, that's, uh, that's to see now still. And, uh, and if the action is, is uh, properly implemented, that would avoid a, a stop uh, from the machine and that improves the efficiency. Yeah, so the 
OEE would increase if we reduce the number of stops, given some fixed amount of rubies in the process, blah, blah. So this is the main idea, yeah. From a development point of view, it's very, as I told you, it's very hard because uh, even for us that have a, a big industrial partners where we do predictive maintenance for, uh, the, this type of data is very challenging. We cannot model it with some uh, simple linear thing or, uh, or intuitive model. So basically we have to come up with something hard. Yeah, something that is able to model with binary data, high nonlinear stuff. And there is where the, uh, the challenge comes in. Yeah. So basically, uh, we draw our idea from, is it here? Oh, it's not in this slide. Okay, so let me go back again. So basically, we stole our idea from uh, Google Salfold, where some uh, protein processes are modeled, uh, uh, so you, some sequence of proteins are modeled by transforming the sequence into some images, and that's done with through this uh, Gramian angular field transformation, it's called, which just gets some ongoing data and gets transformed into some image. Yeah? By transforming into images, the, the interesting thing is that then a convolutional, two-dimensional convolutional neural networks can be applied, which are now very fancy and very advanced, and is revolutionizing the, the machine learning world, basically, or not now, the last five, the previous five years, now we are ready further. And then from these convolutional neural networks, uh, we can uh, use the output to try to predict the risk of failure. Yeah? The risk of failure, will, uh, to do that, we will use some uh, new tools that are called transformers that are, are a type of neural network that have some attention process and is, is able to track changes in a, in a very efficient way. Yeah? So basically, we have a very fancy solution to try to, to see if we can uh, predict the failure of the machines on real time and as, as more ahead on time as possible, in fact. So what can we do? So basically what you see here in the in the top figure is, uh, so how do you define, define events? So that's the first thing, when what's happening. So what you see here in the red lines is basically uh, the differential of the time between two events recorded by the PLC. The PLC, as I told you, just record an event if something happened. So basically, this high peaks on red says, okay, the machine is being stopped too long because it is in seconds, so it's stopped more 200 or more seconds. I reduce this scale so you can see something. And uh, normally there is a uh, you you see a, ooh. so you, there is um, something that says okay, around five seconds something happens all the time. So there is a, a kind of a straight line right down there. And then there is peaks happening, yeah. So there is some oscillation around five seconds on when things normally happen, and then there is moments in which uh, the machine really is doing something weird, yeah. So basically, these ones is they are clear stops, and and the, there is smaller ones that they call uh, micro stops, and the factory. Yeah? So basically, we are in a, in a, some data driven way. We are able to detect to look at this data and do, draw some statistics to define which event is too long or which one is too short. So basically we can run some statistics and make a cutoff here that lets us know this went well, this didn't go well. And then we can use that to label uh, each time point as if the machine is performing well or the machine took, is taking too long. Yeah, As simple as that. All that PLC data, we we just do the alpha fold trick, and we get some images out of it. Of it, these are real images, and then we just use the label data on using this fashion to train some transformer. So basically, what we see is that we can predict perfect when the machine is doing fine, and we can approximately get like a 50% times when the machine is going to fail. Yeah. But that's not the whole story. Yeah? So this is with a probability threshold set to 0, 0.5 for a binary classifier. You can play with the ROC curves to take a different classifier that gets you a, a, a decrease, an increased number of detections here for the case that there is a, a event, a failure of the machine at the price of reducing 
uh, a little bit the number here of how perfect it is when there is no issue. Furthermore, we are not interested in detecting that is going to be an event just one event before because basically that's approximately five seconds and in five seconds you will even if you raise the alarm you will not be able to to get an intervention so we do, did some extra analysis where we can optimize uh, how much time before we can get an idea that some things are happening and what we see is that uh, there is a trend occurring already around 25 time steps before which is uh, more than 100 seconds uh, before so let's say that around 100 seconds before something is going to happen or a bit before we already start to see a trend that we can see that something is going to happen and uh, this is basically this looks very uh, complex <laughs> to all of you probably but uh, we didn't arrive here in one week we got all the support from the digitbrain uh, people to to arrive here and what you see here is that uh, this is how the solution is actually implemented uh, in the cloud and there is one part that is implemented at the factory side say INSA, and uh, there is one part that is implemented in the digitbrain platform and uh, all these parts the all all the code in there runs in independent dockers uh, and uh, some of them uh, uh, contain, for example, the communication inside the factory, communication from the factory to the cloud or back, yeah? and, and is built out of this uh, uh, model data and algorithm structure that uh, that's required. Mm. Well. And uh, that's all I have to say to you. I hope it's uh, a bit informative about how this works. And uh, if you have any questions, feel, feel free. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alberto, for your uh, your witness. Um, now it's the, the Q&A session. Uh, so, of course, the, um, uh, the, the floor is yours. Uh, to, uh, I'm talking to the audience. Uh, if you have any questions, you may pose. Um, uh, just uh, since a couple of minutes ago, there was uh, a question of um, Dobieslav uh, in, in the um, in the chat, uh, but uh, I cannot see it anymore. Um, uh, it was, uh, if I remember well, uh, it, it was about uh, the need to publish um uh, to, to, to publish uh, some information and some uh, some assets uh, uh, in uh, publicly and or in the Angora works uh, so I would very much uh, like to, to have Tamash views view on, on that um he, if he can uh, and uh, I would also uh, ask um, kindly to, to double staff. Uh, to to repeat uh, uh, to retype actually not repeat uh, repeat uh, the the question because uh, I don't know you guys but I cannot see it anymore in the um, question box um, uh, um, because it has been arrayed uh, in some way. Yeah, uh, uh, Giacomo, I uh, actually answered the both questions which were in the chat uh, uh, in writing as well. And I think the first one I, I reflected on in this uh, a private uh, 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 or public Docker registry uh, issue, I, 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 I hope that I answered the question in the way how you expected that. But in general, we do not force you to put your microservices into any public Docker registry. So you don't have to do that. Uh, you can if you want to, but you don't have to. We set up a private Docker registry inside the project because we thought that for prototyping purposes, it is easier if you share it with the project partners. But even if for that one you have concerns and, and you don't want to do that, then you can use your own private Docker registry. Then we need to make some adjustments in the platform, but we did it in the past as well. So that should work out okay. Uh, for, for simplicity reasons, uh, we, we set up this private Docker registry, which is only visible for project partners. And, and again, until the development goes on, it may be the easiest uh, way of, of sharing your Docker container. We just need a place from where we can grab the Docker container before execution. So the platform actually uh, grabs that Docker container and executes that. 
Now, regarding the licensing model, which you said uh, that you, you, you license by uh, uh, instance, which you create, I think this is very much in line with what we have in mind. So we are going to offer various uh, licensing models, how the assets or how the digital twins uh, can be charged for. So again, I don't see uh, issues there. Uh, what, what, what is the uh, kind of idea of us is that uh, all the execution will happen through the digital agora because the digital agora will be the one which is going to cater for the users and which is going to do the charging. So we would like to go all charging to go through us because obviously we are going to charge certain surcharge for using the platform and using the capabilities of the platform. And obviously you can also charge your fees for all the assets which you are providing on the platform. So that's the idea. Thank you very much, Tamar. I think that this is this point is very important. Um, so uh, I cannot see uh, any other questions from the audience right now. Uh, I just want to uh, give a message. So because time is short, uh, the deadline of this open call is uh, is very close. It's one one month left. Uh, but I think you have quite a lot of bases uh, up to your sleeve if you want. Uh, so I'm talking about uh, what we presented today. So a very well structured um, uh, document toolkit and of course uh, a, a network of uh, technical partners and most importantly of DIHs uh, which are uh, ready to support you um, in the application process. So um, I really hope this uh, webinar um, it has been effective. Um, in, uh, in providing, let's say, some further insight. Uh, don't forget to, to build up your, your, your experiment, uh, to contact us uh, on time and, uh, and to apply. And, uh, and yes, on the Digit Brain, on behalf of the Digit Brain Consortium, um, I would like to thank uh, you for the, your participation and uh, wish you uh, a, a good luck. Uh, so um, thank you all. Uh, have a nice uh, day and a, a nice weekend. Thank you very much, all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, bye.